so this this is now we are at the point of uh, we made some some uh, um, feature selections for categorical for numerical we have seen in some examples we have understood what 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 means feature engineering and everything now is the point that we are at the point that we uh, we want to understand if there's within our uh, predictors some of them that are interacting within each other and influencing the response so the objective of this chapter are to understand how predictors relate to the outcome, when to apply for interaction effects, and how to make prediction selection for looking to K interactions. Okay, so... Um, as I said, uh, um, we'll be looking at the interaction effect caused by prediction, uh, predictors acting together on the response variable. And the book says, es explain this, this, this um, effect this way, say additional variation in the response can be explained by the effect of two or more predictors working in conjunction with each other. So, as an example, an example, if we consider water and fertilizer on the yield of field corn, so if, if, you, if you have uh, no water but some fertilizer, the crop field doesn't produce uh, any, any, any yield, okay, because there's no water. Conversely, if you have uh, a, a right amount, sufficient amount of water but no fertilizer, you have the, the yield, but it's not growing very much, okay? So you need a balanced combination of water and fertilizer. So that means that the growing of yield is influenced by the, uh, con the interaction in conjunction of water and fertilizer. So predictors are said to interact if they combine effect is different, less or greater than what we would expect if we were to add the impact of each of the effect when considered alone. Okay, so you need to meditate a bit, but it's nice, it's a nice sentence. So then what else, what says is uh, this interaction effect is not correlation, okay? So let, let's imagine that we have a, um, a data set and we have, uh, we, we just, have a response variable and two predictors. I want to see, just as the same as water and fertilizer, we want to see if these two predictors influence the response. So they're not said that they, the water and fertilizer are correlated within each other. So they are independent, but influencing the response. Because if they were correlated, they were redundant. Okay, so the, the model will just spit out that they, they are as a NA because they are uh, just as, as, as the same. Okay, so individual variables, fertilizers and water in this case, are referred uh, to as the main effect terms when outside of an interaction. Okay, and here still <laughs> some, some meditation is, is needed. This is nice. So this is for Brandon, okay? And for, for me as well, because I said that that was a, a geom smooth. So it's a sort of geom smooth in some senses. Okay. So it's, a, uh, it's like making uh, old models. The old, these old lines are, are, are effectively make, made uh, with a model, it, representing a model result. But what's happened here is that we build a grid. Okay. And then we group the, 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 the result of the, the representation of these two predictors uh, with the level of uh, prediction result. So if, if it's that clear. So in, in, um, just to, to say why we are doing this, this, uh, this plot, this is for uh, making a visualization of 
what are this 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 interaction? What are the effects of interaction? We have four types of interaction. We have uh, uh, additive, so no interaction. When you sum your predictor plus 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 and don't use interaction. Then we have antagonist interaction. So this is when uh, the the you apply the interaction with a multiplication, with a coefficient and a multi multiplication in, in case of pairwise, like a, a couple of, of uh, predictor. But then re the result of the uh, beta three, the coefficient beta three result as negative. So then you realize that the interaction is antagonistic. Uh, synergistic is the opposite. So beta three will result as a positive number. Okay, and then finally, there is a fourth type, which is uh, atypical, and this is when beta three is different of zero. Um, but uh, uh, the main difference is that uh, just one of the two predictor doesn't affect the response. So it, it it is the case of shepherd interaction. So just one of the two, you you may interaction within two predictor, but just one of the two is effectively interact uh, interacting influencing the response while the other not. So I don't, uh, don't do this, this four type. We just uh, have a look at the first three. And um, to uh, make this nice plot, uh, you need to, I need to, to go faster because there's many things. Um, we make a um, synthetic data set, okay? Uh, the two predictors are just uh, random uniforms, and uh, we suppose that the error is normal, distributed. Then uh, everyone knows what we are talking about. So to build up uh, the synthetic data, we hypothesize some noise, adding uh, the level of coefficients, okay? Just uh, be like uh, the intercept as a zero and the other two equal to one. Uh, we 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 advertise that uh, we're supposed to have some some coefficients, but uh, we don't know what what the level are they. So we we use it to to build the formula, but obviously this is one, this is one, so it doesn't. This is zero, doesn't do anything, but uh, um, it, it's just the construction of the formula that is the same and. When you build synthetic data, you might want to change this to some other values. But in this case, we start uh, with this basic level, okay? Just imagine that uh, this then, when we make a model and we replicate the observed values, will take some levels, okay? So then the, the, the things that the change is beta three. So in this case, uh, we, we give some values to beta three. So beta three can be negative, uh, neutral, zero, or positive in case of antagonism, no interaction or synergies, okay? So now we, our synthetic data, uh, we, we sum basically, we use this, uh, this formula with this, uh, with this result and we find we find this this the level of y no this this is our response and we use this as our observed data synthetic observed data and we put in a table with our, the other two predictors x1 and x2 which are random uniforms okay now so this is our data What we do is making a simple linear model uh, with an interaction effect within the two predictors, okay? And then we predict the model values to obtain the outcome. We assign this value to Z because geom contour, which is the geom contour that makes this plot, uh, requires a third uh, element. So that you have not just X and Y, but you have Z 
in the visualization. It means that this plot is a sort of, it's, it's, it's a B-dimensional, but it's a three-dimensional. I, I, it's difficult for me to explain that, uh, but it takes consideration of the um, levels of predictions. So of a third variable and not just for assigning the color, but just uh, it, it, it's grouping the data within the le different level of prediction that you have found with, with your model. So in order to do that, you cannot just do ggplot, geom contour and use this X, Y, and Z because otherwise it doesn't work. And I'll show you why, I'll show you why. Okay. Um, okay. So what I did it is this, no? Okay. Uh, my this is my Y. Okay, they have created with the uh, with the things, and this is the table. Okay, obtain it. Now, if I uh, do my model and uh, uh, extrapolate the prediction, I can do a simple plot, no? Using x one, x two, and color it by the factor of z. What I obtain is something nice. So you can see. You see that they are colored, but uh, within, within stripes. So each level of, of um, the, um, the prediction, uh, it's um, grouped, okay, by the level of uh, the, uh, the, the two predictors are grouped within the level of predictions, the result of your model. You see that you have like stripes column, okay? But then if you use geom contour here, it doesn't work because uh, we don't have a full grid here. So you see here, you don't have values. So you need a grid to, to, to be able to interpolate uh, the points and make the curve. Okay. Yeah, you have to so fill I'll the spaces here. between. You have exactly. to fill the spaces between the points. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So in order to do that, you do a, a bit of research on geom contour, what is it, and blah 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 blah. So you find that uh, there is this nice package interp and interpolation. That means interpolation. So you make the interpolation within the three. Uh, elements of your data set. And then you need to subset the result because um, it interpolates, but it will be rectangular. So you need something uh, like uh, same number of rows, same number of columns. So what we do here is building a grid data frame, uh, making the same number of uh, of rows and same number of columns, just to make it short. So now we have a nice grid data frame. I don't know if you can see, um, it might take some time to say that uh, it's repeating the value of X, the number of or rows. So you need to, well, anyway, just trust me. Uh, and maybe uh, if you need it, you can have a look at it. But anyway, now we have a grid. So the full grid of, of, of points uh, that can be grouped by different levels of the prediction results of your model. Now we use, we can use geom contour, okay? Because it requires a third element. And um, I found this as well, if you want the color as, as is, you need to use this uh, after stats level and size to, to make it like a bit thicker. And uh, you have this result. That's nice. Then 
uh, as you can see, uh, here in the synergies, I've used uh, beta-3 positive, and uh, we have this uh, um, positive uh, interaction result. Here there is no interaction, and here there is uh, antagonism. Okay. There, that would be more consideration to, to make, but, you know. Um, They're really nice yeah. plots. Thank yeah. you for making them. Yeah, yeah. And you can do better because there's more. You can do, you can color the background. You can do like the, 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 the squares underneath. So you can do many things. But anyway, uh, going back to real data, if we look at MS data, and uh, we can see that uh, uh, sales price versus year built, when grouped for air conditioning, we see that uh, having air conditioning, it's influencing the price within time. No? So this is um, an interaction effect on the response. And uh, overall condition, and this has, uh, has been classified within three levels, fair, good, and average. The, the fair doesn't influence much, while the other two, influence a bit. So you imagine that you have a huge amount of predictors. You should do this for each couple of, the, uh, of them to, to have a precise towards result and say that you are doing a good job, no? This is might be tricky and time, time consuming. You can always, again, uh, land to a different, uh, a not, not quite right result. So still. Uh, so this is the, our model, and this is the term of interaction. Uh, which, which predictor interact? So interaction can be, so you, we need to find another method instead of looking at each couple of, of pairwise interactions, okay? So three base models can be a good solution as well as random forest, boosted tree models, search techniques, in conjunction with support vector machines. We have, if we, we have time and we have a look at them because the, the, the chapter mentioned, we already, uh, um, okay. So um, you starting from a very bottom, grouping your predictors by their nature. So they are continuous, they are qualitative, and then you make a selection before, and then you, try attempt to identify the right interactions. So the um, interaction effect can be um, uh, of different levels. So this is the first level. So you do pairwise interaction. Then you have three levels interaction, four level, five level. And uh, the, the more you're growing the level of interaction, the more the shepherd interaction, so the, the those things that uh, uh, is influenced by just one, of, for example, you have three, for example, you have three uh, predictors and you make interaction of three of them. It might be possible that just one of them is the, is, this is the one that influences your response. The other two are just uh, following uh, the other. So, uh, the shepherd interaction effect is it's quite challenging when you do um, higher level of interaction, so above two, three level, four level, etc. So um, this is a nice paper to have a look at for more insights. And um, when you this is uh, there are more things to think about when you do experimental design and predictive modeling is that, uh, so are the interaction hierarchy, so the degree of interaction that we just said, the effect of sparsity, that means that maybe just a, pro a proportion of interaction is, is effective, not that. And then there is the effect heredity that can be strong or weak. And when you apply other models, uh, such as random forest or 
so Glimnet uh, with penalties and everything, you can specify. If you are think that your data may have a strong heredity or weak heredity, or may you, you want to like, try uh, the two. Okay, so is it possible, some questions, is it possible to identify all possible predictive interactions? What do you think on a data set? It depends. It always depends. <laughs> Such a terrible answer. <laughs> but it does. Is it? Yeah, it, 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 it depends on what, what kind of uh, data you have. Okay, if you have a simple, you know, data set, like the one that you show with two, you know, with two main uh, predictors, then yeah, you can do some permutations, etc. It's simple. But if you have a thousand, uh, uh, that's get a little, a little bit more complicated. Big challenge. <laughs> so you can have millions of possible predictive interactions and come on. <laughs> Practically, you know, you're not going to exactly. have in, even time or even computing power, you know, to do all that. Exactly. So we need to find a, a, a way. No, and in the, the chapter, the author said, um, you know, is it possible? It, it, it's possible to evaluate all possible interactions, but still some some misleading information might uh, might arise. So uh, should the interaction term be created before or after the processing part? Here there's an example and says, it shows the difference. And we already seen this plot, uh, how can change making interaction before and after the pre-processing. So uh, th there's many, many, many things that you need to try when you make a model if you want to reach like a certain level. And but if you do all pairwise interaction terms, if you have p predict, you're going to calculate and, and make p times per, uh, p minus one divided by two pairwise interaction terms, which are quite a number if if it, p is large. So we need to find uh, um, methods, solutions, new ways, or combination of old ways. To, uh, to do these things. Um, if we do um, uh, linear regression, if we do regression, both, see the linear or logistic regression, um, we, uh, and we, we meant to do first level of interaction, like pairwise interaction, it's like we are making a certain number of models, okay, which are called nested models. So we start with two predictors, and interaction terms, two predictors, interaction terms for all the predictors. So it's happened that we are actually making hypothesis, multiple hypothesis testing. Say my new hypothesis is there is an interaction and the alternative, there is no interaction. Okay, so this is the case of multiple hypothesis testing. And, this, and in this case, it's just as the same. We value the p-value, we make the two model and then we use ANOVA for comparing them. We look at the p-value and we then decide if there's an interaction or not, which one of the two is the best model and everything. And so uh, when we, we did uh, the introduction of statistical learning, the last chapter, multiple testing, this exactly the same. So now we are just doing it for each couple of, uh, the predictors within the data set. So we have a multiple hypothesis testing and um, we can obviously reduce the amount of false discoveries. So the false interaction term that we may uh, erroneously, um, sorry, uh, found or believe that they are interacting the response with uh, some methods such as Pomferoni correction on the false discovery rate. So just uh, to mention some, um there is full code here in the uh in the repo and then uh, um as i already said uh, 
Um, okay, so now we have talked about regression. Okay, so now we, we need, as I said, find another method, which are methods that are more, a bit more complicated, as I said, we said many times. So like less understandable or explicable, but uh, more, more, more effective somehow. And these are three models such as trees, support vector machine, neural networks, k-nearest neighbor, penalized models. So it's less interpretable, but allow for linear logistic regression. So that you can use linear logistic regression, but with some adjustments. Okay. Um, so we now want to use the, the regression, okay, because the regression is the best, uh, you know, the, the the more understand, the, the more understand, the, the most understandable one. So we, we like to start with a, a, a regression model, but uh, it might be a bit complicated. So we need to add some modifications. And uh, this might be the, the case to use like Glimnet with um, a penalty. Okay, so we can use reach regression or, or lasso criteria for, uh, for optimization criteria for um, uh, making prediction selection, selecting just the prediction, the, the predictors that are the most uh, interesting one for, for what we want to do. So uh, basically, um, when we do model assessment, so we have made our model and we want to look at the model result, we compare the result with, with so the, the response with the outcome and the difference is the sum of, um, the sum of square. Um, and um, this, this, uh, this value here uh, can be slightly uh, modified adding a penalty, which is uh, like a, a co coefficient that goes from zero to one, and uh, would be like a weight multiplying the, the, the coefficient. So this way you're adding, uh, altering, uh, altering somehow uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, 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 the result in a way that uh, um, you can uh, um, select uh, your predictors under under center. So, um, yeah. So, in the formula, when when you um, you add this uh, uh, level of uh, penalty. Uh, if you if you set it to one, you have a lasso. If you set it to no point five, you have a mixed model. If you uh, set to zero, it's a full ridge uh, regression. So any questions? Okay. This is, um, I like to, to, to show you this as well. This one here is uh, basically uh, the level of penalty on uh, um, the value of the residual uh, sum of square. And uh, as you can see, the, um, this is the level of alpha, the mixture. If alpha is one uh, or alpha is uh, no point two, very low, like close to zero, uh, you see how, how the uh, RMC changes and um, the, the, the lowest value would be like here uh, within uh, um, this, um, this level of penalty 
which is uh, like, um, I'm gonna say. Um, do Do you not look for the lowest level overall? Because like the lowest value is point two, just just under one e o o two. But yeah. are you averaging across the mixture levels, the the alpha levels, to get the ideal penalty? Okay, I show you because uh, uh, this. Uh... Okay, so this is uh, uh, the MS uh, data. So we fold, uh, this is the recipe. Uh, so we made the uh, fissure engineering, okay, pre-processing part. And as you can see, uh, there is uh, the, the interaction part here. Yeah. And in, in this case, we have used just these two predictors, building type and neighborhood, Oh, but we did we did uh, one hot encoding. Isn't that what step dummy is? Uh, we so didn't have do column. So you have columns with building type one, two, three, four, zero, one, zero, one, binary. Yeah. Right. Okay. What's up? You have to. You have to. You have to bake it. Oh. I'm a strain. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. I need to load the data. Can you see that this is, um, maybe is that? I'm a strain. I'm a strain. No, but um, I need, uh, I made, um... If it's too difficult, that's okay. You can carry forward. I know it's a big, it's a big chapter, so. No, 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 no. yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, that's, ab yeah, yeah. That, that's absolutely the case when you make all zeros and one, but now you are using just a um, building type and neighborhood, so you have just two predictors, not many in this case. Okay. Uh, that, so that's what, that's what, that's what, I, that's what in, more, right? Right. That, that's what in the step interact uh, recipe you have start with. Okay. So you're going to combine each of the building types with exactly. each of the neighborhood types. So you're going to have a lot of interactions there, depending on the, the matrix of how many building types and how many neighborhood do you have. That, that's why it says starts with. Exactly. exactly. Because if not, the interaction of building type and neighborhood, let's say it was uh, encoded, you know, uh, you know, building type ordinal, and then encoded as a label, then you just need those two, right? But you are hot encoding. You are, you know, uh, creating this matrix of one and zeros for each of the building types and neighborhoods. Okay. So maybe if, uh, because I needed to do that. Okay. No. Uh, okay. Let's um, let's go forward. So yeah, this is yeah, our. Ahead. Yeah. This is the um, basically the pre-processing part. No? Okay, so we uh, we already did that. These are our uh, recipe uh, and all the things. So what we do now is uh, making a linear um, uh, linear regression and tuning the penalty and the mixture, both of them. Okay, I do tune and then set the engine to Glimnet. Okay. Then uh, the workflow, add the recipe and the model. Then uh, the control part, because I need to save the prediction and save the workflow. 
And then I need to uh, make, this is the part that you're interested in, Brandon, because um, this is where you, um, they, exactly. Uh, this is where you make the grid for the different level of penalties that in, and the mixture that you want to try. So, so you set a grid and then inside the tune grid, because you need to do, use tune grid, you use the grid. This might take a while. You tune it and then um, maybe I, I, but why? But anyway, ah, because it's uh, in another folder. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, this way you do select the best and this releases the, the best value for the penalty and the mixture. But Julia Silje said on a, one of her videos that this might not be the best effective result because we need to look for the, uh, select for the percent of loss, right? So we forget this select best and finalize the workflow with this function inside. So instead of using select best here, you could use select best and automatically will use the, the values of penalty and mixture on the best model. Without, you, you can even, there is another way that you can even put that value inside the, the mod and, and then run again the bond. But you can just put the select best inside here, the finalized workflow, and you, uh, will position it automatically the, 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 the best uh, value for the penalties. Here we use select by percent lost, loss, penalty. The, and so the, the value is slightly different. The result of this is not this one here, but slightly different. And then you do last fit on, on the split. So this way, you then now can collect uh, the prediction and make the, the plot. Okay. This, the, the plot that we are um, looking, um, it's uh, basically a bit more uh, complicated um, because uh, uh, is this one here. So we, we do this, the same thing, collecting the matrix, okay. Then we do uh, the penalty on the x-axis, the mean on the y-axis, and then group it by mixture. And then jump point, jump line. There is a scale log, um, so. This is the, uh, the, the, the product. But basically, you, are, uh, need, you need to set the mixture as a factor. So it color uh, the, the things uh, precisely. But I just repeated the model here again. Um, as you can see, I just repeated the model with, with more, uh, with all the, the things. So this is another thing that I wanted to mention. When you have, a, a, so you're not using just two predictors, but a certain number of predictors, okay? So the others did it like a way to um, put all the predictors in a formula. And uh, this is the, um, the way to do that. So you do a table and then mutate the term uh, starting with, uh, okay. So it builds a large uh, uh, formula with, without typing everything out. 
So it does automatically. Okay. So con in conclusion, it says that uh, the, the lowest value here, so the, this, this, um, the lowest value here is it basically reached by um, all mixtures. Because as you can see here, there's like a knot. Okay. But anyway. Uh, okay. So um, there is uh, some uh, guiding principles. Um, so two stage model is um, is another approach to use, which is the the one that we just said. So you do a simple model and then you do a nested model, or uh, an adjusted model. But you start in like uh, with two, two stages. Use a simple model such as linear model GLM, and then add interaction effect, and then use the model ready for considering interaction. So you do two models. So you do prima like before linear regression, uh, linear or logistic regression, and then or decision tree, random forest, uh, okay, uh, to, to further uh, identify the interactions. Um, this is uh, an example. Uh, if we are in this condition where uh, beta 3 is positive 10, okay, what's happened is this, that, um, so it's positive, and that means that is synergistic inter interaction, oh, okay, we said. This is beta three. It is, is it's positive. It's synergistic. But what's happened is that just one of the two is effectively interacting the response. Not both. Both of them. Even if the result sh uh, saying you that uh, uh, there is the, there is an interaction effect on the response. So. And how do you identify this? You identify this by excluding the interaction effect, considering the error, and then because just one of the two is making the interaction, as you can see in X, X2, there is no beta. So you then, um, Consider the, the effect of beta as an, er as an error, as a noise within the data. So random measurement error remains unexplained. So basically this may be due to randomness. So, and again, he, men he are mentioned the, 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 the different levels of hierarchy, sparsity, and heredity, uh, because uh, when to, to identify this uh, level of randomness, you need to look at uh, uh, this other um, uh, effect on, uh, on interaction and choose the type of heredity. When, when you do uh, classification, you, you can use the, the per person residual. I, I will do this bit, like expand a bit of this, uh, on this a bit more, but, um, okay. So we have uh, like 10 minutes. And uh, what's happened here is that there is, there is a, um, like an example using three base model. And uh, basically says that uh, you can use three, three base model, but using random models, it will be better because you, you do a three uh, model um, like this. Okay, if you, if you do a decision tree, just one tree, no? 
you you might understand that there is some some um, connection within within um, the predictors uh, affecting the the response. But uh, if you use more than a decision tree, so more decision tree in like the same as in a random forest, you might be able to effectively uh, do a better job. And we, we, we let, um, okay, so here I I made a nice uh, dendrogram on the on the um, MS data just to see how they group. And as you can see, the, the funny thing is that uh, I see that the latitude is ended up here and the longitude is ended up on the other side. So like the, the latitude and the longitude influence the response differently, for example. And um, how I made this, this, this is a um, very, very simple, um, Um, thing that um, you can do with H cluster. And um, um, okay, uh, now, now I'm um, I have difficulties in uh, in finding it, but um, uh, um, as as the same as here, uh, this is just to understand what what means making a, a decision tree, and uh, what what the authors done uh, is to uh, showing what uh, what would be the result using an H statistic. And uh, so the partial dependency when you make a random forest. So you make a random forest, uh, and then you want to see uh, what to compare the joint effect of two or more predictors. Okay, to make this comparison, uh, so the part to identify the partial dependency in the random forest, you use this H statistic, and this H statistic is calculated. Uh, um you can find more information here and uh, here in the in the book there's a here um the code you can see that when it's zero when the result of this h statistic is zero there will be no interaction uh otherwise uh that 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 means that some interaction is in place and so you have out of bags samples, so all the things that uh, you don't need it, all of them that are zero, you put it in a, outside, uh, uh, that, that would be part of the out of bag samples within the random forest. Uh, there is the use of a pre package, pre, the name it pre package, which is nice, and uh, he provides a function uh, for making a model. For, for doing this H statistics. So you use the pre function, pre function, and in, as usually makes a model, but this time really set some, some values. In there. Then finally, 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 this is nice. So basically, going back again to linear and log logistic models, if you think you have a huge amount of predictors, you might want to uh, turn around the problem making a selection of the predictors before searching for interaction terms. So this way you can do forwards, back, backwards, or stepwise selection. So you do selection of the predictors before searching for interactions. And the forward selection starts with no predictors and then select the best one and so on and so forth. Back selection starts with all the predictors and then discard one, discard one, discard one, all, all that are not needed. Then stepwise selection adds and remove the, the predictors that are not in, uh, influencing. And then uh, the author st stops and talks about this uh, feasible solution algorithm, which is a, a modification 
um, of these three approaches and uh, started with Miller. It's Miller that made uh, this feasible uh, solution algorithm. It then has been extended by Hopkins. Um, the, 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 um, the algorithm is a bit tricky. So basically imagine that you have 10 predictors and you select three, okay? Of these three predictors, you make um, um, an interaction term and then discard one and keep the other two. And then the other two will be uh, um, searched for interaction with all the other uh, predictors. So you, you keep another one from, from the, the remaining ones and do the same and then keep another one. At the end, if none of them improve the result, the result of the performance, you keep the first one that you have put away. To just to reassume, because it's a bit complicated <laughs> somehow. Um, so there is an extension of by Hawkins, uh, which established Q as a random start, M as a term of this set, P as a predictors, and establish the space. So you have this matrix of Q times M times P. And in general, the space will be P power them. Then there is someone else, this uh, Lambert, which made another adjustment of this algorithm, this approach. And uh, you have an application with the MS data um, here. But basically, it's the same algorithm. So you uh, discard by the level of p value, which is uh, too low or too, too high. And uh, it's so how much those interaction uh, influence the response, and you discard it or keep it, discard it or keep it, basically. This is what is kind of algorithms. And then, then they have adjustments, they are slightly different within each other. So other potentially useful tools are Mars, FDA, and Cubist. So multivariate adaptive regression splines, which are non-linear modeling techniques for continuous response. Or you have Mars, um, slightly modified, uh, extended, to classification outcomes, and this is called flexible discriminant analysis. And then you have Cubist, which is from Kuhn and Johnson, and you can have a look at that. And uh, this is a rule-based regression model that builds a tree and then prune it. They compose it into a set of rules that are pruned and perhaps eliminated. Conclusion. It's challenging <laughs> to detect all the real interacting effect on uh, data sets with many predictors. So a good advice from the expert in the field of data could be K to identify predictors that are force of interaction for that specific data, type of data. In addition, the application of pairwise interaction selection is still to be applied for looking at possible changes that might apply. Over time. Um, here, that, that, was, that was a bit of repetition somehow within the chapter when mentioning the linear and the, mo and the logistic models, use it and then reuse it and then. But um, it put you through. The, the issue. So it makes you understand what is happening and uh, how you can make it better and gives you all the tools available. And eventually, eventually open up your mind to make new ones, mentioning um, adjustments to, to models and how you can make your own maybe. 
uh, <laughs> in, in that section of the backward uh, forward selection uh, stepwise, I remember that I use a package called FD, FWD select or selection. Uh -huh. I remember. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And that one gave me pretty good, you know, pretty good information about which were the predictors that were, you know, that, that were high in the list in terms of making a good model for response. I remember that I use it for, for a, a, a categorical uh, uh, situation. Okay, it was more, more of a rating. And that package, although it's, you know, we have to take it with a grain of salt because I checked the package if they are being updated recently. Yeah. And that package has not been updated, you know, since probably two or three years. So there could be some, you know, funny things because our changes, you know, uh, if they use other packages and they're changing, then, you know, it could give you some, <laughs> some errors, some bugs. But uh, the last time I, I, I did it, I, I, I used it about two years ago. Uh, it gave me pretty good, pretty good uh, results. And it's, you know, you can do different ways, forward, backward, uh, stepwise, etc. So it gives you, a lot models. It's a very good package. Uh, F FWD select or selection. Yeah, yeah. I I remember. I remember that was that was a nice uh, nice chapter as well. Yeah, yeah. And and you just you know input your your formula you know for the regression. You put your formula and he does the whole thing and he gives you a good uh, you know output on which are the ones that are the most significant. Um, what else? I'd like to, to show you, um, okay, now it's time. So I think it's, um, I haven't had time to, to show you all the codes because, um, uh, you know, that there's no time. When, so, but I think I'm going to push them that fold with the with the codes. So, uh, if someone interested, they can have a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your effort uh, on that. It was really, really good. I put yeah, in the chat the, the package. F D F W D select. That's the package. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, and I've pushed your. Um, uh your chapter uh as well so if, if you now want to make a modification uh if you want to like i don't know add, add a few things yeah, yeah. because because i i didn't do a very good job i just um uh, uh no that's know. my fault i didn't do a good job <laughs> no no you know uh, uh that that was useful when you explained uh but um if it you you know you can uh, like add comments and uh, yeah. Um, yeah make it more like our markdown and less like just an R script yeah thanks Federica <laughs> you look <laughs> all right okay so see thank you very much see you next week okay uh, well, we can... it's Ricard yeah you do yeah thank I'm you next. <laughs> okay. Bye.